good programs are going on. Uh, how do you involve the undergraduate students in the research projects? Some examples, you know, which are related in I, I identified in I did my master's program and also PhD. Uh, in the research, they are allotted a few undergraduate students. Uh, told me, okay, your master's project you divide into sub -projects. These students have to approach it well. You guide them, and the data is in you. Same thing I did for my PhD. In fact, as a PhD student, it helped me not only to finish my thesis master, but it was also a lesson in management. Because you allocate work, you delegate to coordinate. So both game. Uh, do you have any such schemes where when you are doing this top class research with focused on innovation, you involve the undergraduate students so they get uh, benefited from this? See, I will reply to that. See, some of that thing is happening uh, naturally. You know, the reason being uh, this, you know, we have a professor from MIT who will tell that you know, 20 years back or 30 years back, uh, people, while uh, recruiting the students from IIT in their MS and PhD programs abroad in the top universities, you know, GRE score was the most important thing. And then a little bit of others. Today, the scenario has changed for financial crunch or whatever it is. They don't want to have the people whom they have to train. They want the people who are already trained. So, in today's admission process, if you take at MIT or Stanford or Berkeley, anywhere, you know, just a very good, even a top rank, uh, you know, GRE score only acts as a screening. What you have done as a, in, the, in, the, in the project becomes very, very important. And as a matter of fact, almost all our top students today, when they do project, those who want to go for higher studies, by the way, the number of students going for higher study, they have come down because the jobs are available, so lucrative jobs are available. But still, those who go for higher studies, what happened? You know, all of them publishes <coughs> journal papers, almost all of them. So because of this attitude that, you know, uh, the pull from, from that side, already many of the students who are doing their projects with faculty members are already into research. But the way you have said that, you know, breaking uh, the problem to the masters and the undergraduate, that has not happened. I think we leave it on individual faculty members uh, still there. Um, so I, I don't think uh, as an institute we are pressing anything like that. But the projects are mostly divided into two parts. A lot of people are doing in the Center for Innovation they are doing projects through that one. And the practical things they are interested, including entrepreneurship. Uh, the other one who want to go for really uh, high level research and higher studies, they are anyway doing something related to research yeah, today. You are saying it is happening to some extent in a natural way. Yes. It is good, but you know, uh, the communication is very important. Now, there are students who may like to go for higher studies. Some of them may not know, is it really good for me to go for higher studies or straight away take a job? I'm sure you must be doing a lot of counseling, but if, if you say, if there is a, a mechanism by which we can let the undergraduate students know these are the projects PhD students are doing, and if you like to pursue for higher studies later, it may be good for you to get involved. Maybe then you go and uh, have an interview with this PhD student or their guide, and get involved and do your project work with them. I think this is a very, very good do, suggestion. It will be useful. Yeah, yeah. it's a very good suggestion. Yeah. Uh, this is a related point here. If you look at the way that students typically choose their branches here, it's usually a function of the rank and not their interest. You'll find that the first 100 or 150 people will take a certain discipline, the next 150 will take the next discipline, and so on. And it's clear that they're not thought through the process. Yeah. Because it's very unlikely that all the top 150 would want that same discipline with the same discipline. So is there any effort being made at the counseling stage at joining itself that they should be encouraged to follow their real passion and not what's just the prevalence? Sir, sir, the problem is this. The students are overstuffed with information today. 
that is the problem you you want to say something you will tell 10 things about that one in the counseling stage if you say that there is good, good uh, uh, you know opportunities in for example material science the student will have 10 more data which will block you completely so the the thing is this that at the counseling stage it will work is very difficult because quite often from their relatives or people known or through net etc with good and bad, bad data they come with a preconceived idea most of them so it's very difficult to guide them at the counseling stage now another question is as it is done in most of the universities say for example mit you are admitted to the institution you are not admitted to the department that's something is the wrong way that debate is still on whether we can admit people to the institute and not to the department and decide about the department later on after a year or so this is a debate you know it has what pros and cons pluses and minus uh, we have not been able to uh, change that i mean uh, in india the things are little different if you understand that but at the counseling i am still little doubtful whether it work we have had a few cases of the JE of Rutgers, including Nandan Pratap and Gopakumar, who went and took care of stress and then all went and did physics, which was very much of the norm. And we should be celebrating these kinds of people who are followed what they wanted, clearly they were interested in. Now, this second, this is what yeah, we, we the, have. The problem yeah. is, this is a, this, there are still such people, but there are more exceptions than a rule. That, that's what. Can I give a little opposing view? Yes. The risk of being private, I uh, somehow I got the impression from what you said that uh, you are very proud of the fact that the undergraduate program is getting, or at least percentage wise numbers is reducing over a period of time. Well, when we uh, joined the institute, I still remember the brochure which was sent for before the counseling. Uh, for a mechanical engineer, it said he is somebody who will build a, from a tiny watch to a giant train. I don't know what the pamphlet today you send, what it contains about my candidate. Now, at that time at least, it was that the, the fundamentally good engineers being made available to the industries, to the R&D organizations, uh, the basic uh, thing. That was the emphasis with which it was started. But today it doesn't seem to be it has gone. I think we have to evaluate. I, I come from an R&D organization, BRQ. You can see Department of Space. Uh, atomic energy. They are agreed, they are government organizations. Pay wise may not be comparable to many of the other things, but they are those organizations also need your pay wise. Pay wise, now it is better, and uh, maybe you have to see, we are your definitely hardly anybody from IIT is joining. Department of Space, why did it start its own college of engineering? I think you have to evaluate why, why did they have to do it? It has started, it has started also to meet their needs as they have to I'm sure Dr. Nair also, I know, my batch, uh, 1971 batch, a lot of engineers joined the chair as uh, engineer trainees as well as management trainees. So that team used to be there. Today, I don't know, many of the PSUs, R&D set up also, how many of them joined. Maybe lucrative private jobs, IAM, banking, they may be doing it. But have we gone away from the basic focus of the IITs which, which you set? You can say, yes, that role is being given, uh, fulfilled by the next uh, thing, NITs and some of the good engineering colleges. But please don't forget, you are taking the best talent in the country. You are guilty of taking the best talent in the country to the beta course and they get the next best. Sir, uh, I agree. So why you are... Uh, in yeah, your, I agree. Just add one more point, sir. Yes. Yes, I do agree. The emphasis on MS, PhDs, is required in the right proportion. All over the world it is there. But in the research work and the emphasis for publications, how much of the research work, is there an audit being done? How much of the research work done in India, I am not saying specific to IITs or anything, but all over all institutions, end up in a way a useful product for the country. Yesterday also even uh, Sorry to say that uh, Modi, he was talking. Uh, I don't think he got it right. When he said in the defense sector, we want to manufacture and export. And we will perpetually live in a, a technology transfer mode, getting it, not learning anything from that, and 
why, why the best talent in the country don't join the R&D setups in India and they have to do their own uh, with the thing. As for the PhDs uh, who join these R&D organizations, my experience is the performance has not been good. Those who are, those who are continuing in the institute, yes, they are doing uh, probably well publications. But we don't gain them by publications, we gain them by something else. So how do we solve this problem? Yeah. I'm curious, what fraction of the students and undergraduates who graduate remain in any kind of technical role say, three, four, five years from now? From what I hear, 80% of the students go into yeah. investment management. I think uh, Professor Siram has got some data he will yeah. tell you. Yeah, the, the, you see the BTECs, if you look at the BTECs, a, a large number of them are not staying in core engineering jobs. They are all drifting out all over the place. In fact, you look around yourselves also, you are not probably in the discipline in which you started. So that is happening more now. They are going into all kinds of diverse fields. I'd like to add some data to what uh, Ven Gopal was saying also. The, many people don't realize, enrollment-wise, the number one program on campus is the M-Tech. It's not the B-Tech or MS or PhD. Enrollment-wise, number of degrees given per year, number one is M-Tech. And the M-Techs are there in all the organizations, DRDO also, uh, ISRO, HAL. You walk to any of the government organizations in India, you will find IIT M Techs all over the place. So in that sense, uh, you know, it's not uh, if the B Techs are scattered all over the place. They are very loud. I'm also one, uh, but uh, they are. Would you like? Would you like to, to have the B Techs who went to that's 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 that is the number one, that's the best kept secret perhaps uh, in the IITs. The MTech is the number one uh, volume wise product and they are contributing in a large way to nation building. Uh, that's a different aspect. The BTECs are, you know, this is their first degree program. Uh, large number of them then, as now, go to management and other uh, fields. They do other things. Uh, we are not, uh, you know, doing any planning and trying to push them in any direction. It's a free market. They will go where the money is or uh, where their happiness is as they see it. And uh, you know, I, I don't think how uh, IATs can uh, change that uh, by much, you know, by doing anything. Yeah, I, think yeah, uh, I would like to address your problem. Uh, sir, excuse me one thing. Our people, BTEC, MTEC, MS, PhD, they go to government sectors, uh, as Professor Sidam uh, pointed out, not at a, in a large number, but some of them go. But many of them cannot go, I'm sorry to say, because of the government procedure of recruitment. Today, 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 my MS scholars, 40% are campus recruited. 60% of them are waiting for a job. I have a full yearbook saying who has done which research, which are very relevant to the 37 national laboratories, DRDO, etc. The moment, you know, I tell them, this is what our students are, you come and recruit them, they are saying that, sir, we have to go through a global advertisement that will come, there is a court case, etc. Who is going to wait for six months and ten months for your procedure to be completed and then wait for a job? That's the problem. As a student, when I am completing my degree, I want a job. Because DRDO or you know um, uh, Indian Oil or ONGC will take six months or eight months. No student is going to stay. Yeah, till we are doing campus approval. Till we are doing no. the response is not good. I mean the, the response, I mean I can I can tell you our MS. Maybe we stopped the coming to IIT. That's a different thing. But uh, <laughs> you go to other engineering college and take them. And we have a strategy scale by which they are sort of recognized without the uh, thing. The, the thing is, the thing is, we have people, even today, I am telling you, we have people who are working, you know, in MS degree, they have worked exactly in the area that you need. Yes, sir. I, I think, um, no point in demanding this any long. No, no. Uh, I agree with what you said. And what he is also telling, maybe let's look at some solutions to this. Right. See, the I thing, make one suggestion. see, one of the things, one of the things that uh, the public sector companies now they have started is uh, recruiting on the basis of gate examination. Yeah. 
Uh, as I said, there are many solutions to this. Uh, IIT or any institute cannot force their students to join any particular, they will go where they feel like going. What we need to do, perhaps, is uh, uh, taking into what Mr. I, I have also got similar experience because by the time, even for private company, by, by the time you come, even for a campus recruitment, most of the students are already employed. And uh, the type, type of students who come for such interviews, they, uh, with no aspersions on anyone, they send it so poor that you cannot pay them also. So this is what happened. So maybe you know what we should do is that through a number of programs, uh, the the DRDO, um, uh, big corporates in India uh, who have this kind of uh, formality to get them. Maybe you could invite them or they, they should take initiative, come, come to IIT, give inspirational talks about what are the great things uh, space is doing, what is space, uh, what is uh, aeronautical. What are the opportunities from there? Opportunities them? available, how you can build a nation by joining. Like you know what, Air Force and so many people now, even Air Force is really going out all over, advertising, you know, to come and join. So like this, we may have to do something. Market uh, ourselves, <laughs> that is what we can do. Maybe IIT can create a forum for that. Can I make I one think, comment on that? Sir, I have just one more point. Another problem we face is, you take for MS for not MS, for value. You take a MSc mathematics, for MS, that is, that's what my understanding is, I talked with that thing. And in one and a half, two years, or two and a half years, he or she becomes an MS in aerospace. No, we don't need that. We don't have any other idea to do that. We don't have any other idea to do that. I know, we don't have our MS, our MS students. I know a colleague in the area who is an MS in mathematics, who did the MS from IIT Madras. And, uh, mm -hmm. and you, you call and buy up the same government rules. She is he or she is categorized as an aerospace Okay, and uh, she is given a preference more than a BTEC uh, aerospace and uh, taken. She has not learned, uh, she has not learned proper. So she has the four subjects, yes, some five subjects or something, the minimum requirement, he or she has not. This, in fact, when the curriculum development of the aerospace engineering department, IIT Madras, Prof. Sudar, who is a classmate of mine, he organizes five hundred days. Please don't do this. You, you may say, our related BTEC from related yeah. not necessarily aerospace, the BTEC from mechanical or from related Why are not our MS program is BTEC based? We take BTEC. There may be few cases there. It's a small number. Generally, our MS, you know, 95% students are BTEC. Why is this wrong? I mean, if the person chose mathematics, Undergrad and wants to engineer. They don't say they don't. Some of the things you are encouraging. They are encouraging. I think when you recruit, you need to figure out whether a person has yes. a background or not. That's I don't think that we, with great difficulty, we are able to manage to get into this pretty thing on. Yes. We don't want to go back. Slightly diverging from this. Yeah. Because this is going on for long. So it's not going to ask you one more time. How are we planning in terms of making the system of the system? How are we filing in terms of patents? Patents. See, the patent, uh, the trend of filing patents uh, have picked up only in the last two, three years. Uh, we have created for the first time a separate office for IP, intellectual property. Uh, still, the numbers are low. Let me be very frank about it. But the rate of growth is high. People are, you know, lot many people today. Even when they come for a synopsis or for a um, uh, meeting at the dean's office, quite often I ask the question: I see a, a, a possibility of patenting it. Have you published? If you have not published, why don't you think about that? So we are pushing as an institute that effort is on. But still, I would say we are not very high on that, excepting few uh, areas, few groups who are very focused about that about bringing out. Uh, our research part is an uh, initiative through which we would like to do, you know, develop this trend and transfer it as technology. Yeah, so we should be doing uh, some kind of incentive within the research uh, family of the data. An incentive that we uh, sort of, uh, you know, Yeah, then 
even if you that 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 kind of thing. Okay, thank you. Have two comments, if you don't mind. Yeah. One is, you know, I found when I went to grad school that I didn't know enough mathematics to publish any of the journals. So I think if mathematics people then want to do engineering, that should be welcome. That's probably the right order in which to learn. My second comment is, um, I think IIT in general, and of course in Madras, attracts the very best of minds into its BTEC program, right? And if you think the top 100 or 500 ranked people who join you are not good enough, maybe you need to fix the entry process, but assuming that process is correct or can be corrected, you have 500 of the best people in the, the country, right? I think maybe there should be a focus. I mean, I see a lot of focus on away from meetings, right? I mean, a lot of the emphasis has been masters are important, PhD is important, right? But are, are we, is there a way to make use of this intellectual capital you have, which is the best minds? A few of them will not work out. And maybe encourage them to do more research. Uh, you know, do research in the BTEC program, publishable research, and maybe some fraction will stay on for master's and PhD. I see a trend that we are almost giving up on the BTECs mm -hmm. and saying, okay, we do master's and PhD and that's what is important. So I'd like to introspect. No, actually, uh, I think Professor Ramurthy will bring it. You know, uh, we have not really given up. Okay. You see, we, as I said always, that you know, we want to promote research uh, students, MS and PhD and have a very strong BTEC program. We, so Professor Ramurthy can tell, see the, uh, in the BTEC curriculum, an emphasis definitely, you know, keeping research, keeping innovation as an option, you know, enthusing them, irrespective of what they become later on, but at least seeding the idea to them, we are doing. So I think Professor Ramurthy can elaborate on that. And uh, BTECs from any IIT, can join any other IIT uh, without uh, having to write gate exam if they chose to join an MS by research program in wherever it is available or MTech program, provided they have minimum of eight CCTA, which is a class average. Second thing is they have, uh, if you know, we have opened up there, they can also, if they are uh, uh, keenly interested, there are provisions for application to direct PhD also on specific. One, one more thing I would like to add here. See, many BTECs nowadays, they want to be entrepreneurs. That is another thing. Now, the problem is, at the end of final year, the other pressure comes. You know, from home, you know, you will be entrepreneur, you will be without anything, what are you doing and all that. So, what we have started a special program in which they will be enrolled as MS Entrepreneurship, where they will take few courses, etc. But mostly, they will concentrate on their entrepreneurial activities so that at least at home or from girlfriend the pressures when it comes they will be able to tell look I'm still doing a degree at IIT another degree okay and I'm trying my own enterprise also so this is MS entrepreneurship program particularly for our BTECs we are bringing up because we found a good number of people who would like to do that and their problem is becoming this one, that at the end of four years they have a BTEC degree, but they have not taken a job, they are taking a risk, but people around them are not aware whether this risk will capitalize or, or what it is going to be. So this is a program we are doing for them. Thank you very much. We had wonderful inputs. I will definitely work on each one of them. And Can I make one more point? Maybe it's, it's okay. Eh? You know, we were talking about what is what IIT can do, we are already doing it, to help other engineering colleges. We have a big problem in our country. We, we have set up a committee after this. Maybe some of you are aware of this. Under the International Academy of Engineering, how to improve the quality of education of particularly engineering students in other colleges. Lots of them are there. Staff is not there. Interested. So ASED and IAD have devised a scheme to support them on this one thing. But can IIT, Chennai, take some initiative? If you already done it, maybe there's some you can adopt. To adopt a few colleges around, help them, sort of mentor them to improve. Maybe uh, some of the courses offered here 
could be available to them on the net if they can do that. Or uh, you know, even uh, visit to the campus, see the laboratory, some of the faculty short programs. Something like that if you can do, if you're already doing is good, uh, it could be enhanced. If you're not doing it, please start something. The professor so, Ramurthy. I, I just make one more point and then you can do that. The other one is, uh, you know, whether at B-Tech level or at tech level, uh, if you look at, uh, you know, I don't know you were born to make it, as you said, they go into many parts of life. They become administrators, managers, managing research, managing big academic institutions, industries and all that. Throughout right from the first job to the end, you know, one of the major uh, requirement is the, the uh, EQ development, teamwork, uh, and also professional techniques. <coughs> I'm not very sure because I talked to, I don't have any data, but I've been talking to many engineering colleges, uh, NITs, even though there is a certain total number of credits, if you take undergraduate program, 160 credits or 180 credits for getting a degree, out of that, the credit allotted to the soft skills, professional ethics, humanities, is very, very small, insignificant. Uh, it varies from some places, two, plus, two, two credits out of 180. Which is totally not uh, good enough. And how much emphasis we give to professional ethics and engineers, even if they go for a straight away job after it, and all they do and they go to. We we hear a lot about corruption in the country. We are all aware of that. Anytime you look at the newspaper, first thing you see is all about that. When you talk people committing a lot of crimes, corruption, that's what our uh, students are seeing every day how in the situation educational institutions can uh, play a lot of emphasis on the ethical aspects of their profession. Okay, see the both these questions pertains the department handled by Professor Ramurthy and Professor Ramurthy is very very meticulous about all this. So he will definitely reply them adequately. I have to go for another meeting and students are waiting there. So thank you very much. I will take all your suggestions and try to improve. Actually, before the response, um, we, we have about an hour to go for lunch. And so we had scheduled a, a refreshment break. Uh, what I would suggest is. do something on the I Yeah, exactly. So I think we'll just extend this session to lunch. Um, also, if somebody wants to just walk out for a quick cup of coffee or something, just go ahead and do that and come back and we won't take a break. Not at all. Um, I think what you suggest is when those who want to, they can yeah. go and come back. Let's continue. So we uh, still have four, uh, five faculty who are. Okay. So I will ask whoever has to go right away to please. Ashok, do you want to go? Actually, I want to. I think Ashok, you will answer many of the questions. Some students. Yeah, I don't know what to answer. Can you tell them? I decided to. Uh, for answer I am looking for. Let's see some programs now. If you are already running, yeah. it, you, know, you can tell us and if we can improve upon that, taking our suggestions, they would and how we can get involved also. So, so I, I, I'm going to just briefly talk about two programs that uh, I'm not going to talk much about research part, but this thing research part. Um, we can discuss that. But let me run through two programs that Oscar and I have been guiding over the last year, year and a half. And I think both of the programs are very important programs. I spent a third of my time on this education, and you have referred to education, and a third of the time now on energy. And these are two programs that we took up, which we believe can make a huge difference to the nation. Not just a few of the I'm going to get into the uh, The first is, Let's uh, look at what India, we often do not talk about in the newspapers, I'll say are guilty of this, and particularly in this whole bashing, government bashing that is going on. We have not even seen that today India has 95% of its children 
going to school. It was about 65 percent 15 years back. Gradually inch that up, not talked about, not celebrated, huh? but that has happened. Now that doesn't mean that things are not wrong, the wrong things are wrong, uh, and we need to fix things wrong. But this was something, there has been a huge, huge improvement. The second important thing, and, and it, it, so if you see, um, in terms of quantity, we have achieved quite a bit. Today, 22 million children are going to colleges. Still, low number, GR is low compared to many other countries, but it's been increasing very much. So, I think we still have a long way to go, but uh, there is some gains there. And 1.5 million uh, students are in the engineering. What is GER? What is GER? It's called graduate. What is GER? It's called graduate. 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 The second very, very important gains, again, we don't talk much about it, has been increased in terms of access to education. With 95% of children going, almost everybody is going. But if you take even higher education, engineering colleges, almost 25% of children are now coming from uh, below poverty line or rural children. They're not there. Uh, 15 years, 20 years back, we would find probably one or two. Uh, and today, people are able to get there. People very often talk about corruption, but they let me give you one example, and I was myself shocked to the extent. Um, the woman who works in my house, she has, she doesn't have a husband, so she is, just takes care of two of her children, and uh, she only works in her house. Um, her daughter, of course, is in a, now just finishing big home. Her son wanted to go to engineering college, and I encouraged her to send him. So it, she got admission into engineering college. Um, the only problem was the fees were very high, 42,000 rupees, which was, uh, I said, don't worry, I'm, we are going to pay for it. Then, but then she also found out that there is a government uh, grant available to the first graduate in the family. The first graduate in the family. I said, well, you can try to get it, but I do it very, very tough. Uh, so since no, somebody has told me that if I go and do this, uh, I, a person will come along with me, will take 200 rupees, and will get me uh, uh, this whole process done. And I want to go off at a little earlier today, I want one PM. So sure, you go on PM, but don't worry if you don't get it, because I didn't expect it. Next morning she came huh, and said, sir, uh, sir, told me that it has been all accepted, everything will be done, check of 28,000 rupees will reach within a week. I said, well, it's not going to happen. Next week, 28,000 rupees check was there. The point is, in, and this was when probably uh, about two years back, one of the most corrupt government uh, would probably in power. Point is, there are things functioning and working, and we don't talk about it. Anyway, what is really not working is quality. We have very serious problems. I think all of us know about it. Uh, and we need to fix it up in coming years. No point in talking about coming years back. We need to fix it up in the coming years. And this, and ICT can help. Uh, and there are different MHRD committees now. There are two, three committees which are just focused on this. And the government is sort of just telling us, okay, go fix it, do whatever you want. Start with college level, go down to school level, fix quality. We know that in this fast expansion, the teachers are not motivated, teachers are of poor quality, go and fix it. So, one decision in principle has been taken, though I don't know how many years it will take to get implemented. They have put a fiber in the college school and college. Public, private, finally, we are able to get the government, the minister to sort of say, well, it doesn't matter, it was private. We'll put a fiber up again. Every college, every school. This is a program. It could take five, six, seven years. Funds still has to be allotted. Small progress has been made. But while this is happening, we have been talk talking about designing a small mirror server with whatever available broadband connectivity. Something is available, 3G or something like that, and put it in a college campus with Wi-Fi. Uh, and we are also talking about a DTN channel being used to download data on this. And this, hopefully, in the next three to four months' time, it will be up and running. There are people who are working. Uh, fortunately, we are a young faculty member, Dr. Venkatesh. Uh, um, I mean, he's not a GB. The city of Saskatchewan decided to come as a um, as a 
for adjunct faculty, you know, or visiting faculty, and he's also helping us. Um, uh, Anandam has been helping us. Uh, we will be able to put something like this. Uh, then our objective is, and this is one thing that if it happens, then you have to push it. It won't happen without us. Um, we want to see it's not enough to put in school and colleges because many of these schools and colleges close after 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock. Identify a million public places in the country. Could be a school ground, near a school ground. Put a pillar, put such kind of equipment in that and put a Wi-Fi connectivity. Uh, such that school students and college students are able to access it. Put some benches, get some industry to sponsor this. Let us give connectivity. This is one of the things that we are wanting to get done, and we are pushing it. It will take time, but this is going to happen. Then many of us have been working on access devices. Of course, now today wide screen uh, displays can be put, and today lectures can be live broadcast from anywhere onto this. And we are talking about Akash Pro devices, which uh, I Madras has played a, one of the key roles in defining the next generation of Akash Pro devices. And today there are 12 vendors who are able to supply it, 2,500 rupees plus exactly uh, tax. This is the kind of thing finally we have been able to achieve. It has been a lot of struggle, still a lot of huge negative publicity, huge problems, pulls, pushes. It's very difficult to kind of pro uh, program. Now, the interesting thing is 45 young people of Kumar Shivarajan's age helped me in Ask for volunteers. People came from Hyderabad, Bangalore. Uh, many of them are our and uh, but not all. Uh, Pune, Chennai. They sat down for one day, started something. This is the way the whole thing has to be done. They have got there, and then they kind of helped in defining this. And we have reached today. It's a very, very good device uh, that we are doing. And we are able to create 12 vendors. They will manufacture in India completely. And the idea is that we to three years time, hundred percent manufacturing in India. There are companies which are starting to design ICs in India towards this. And that we are all free that will be made in the See, uh, one of the things that when we went around colleges, and we have been going around lots of colleges trying to figure out and talking to students, they say that we need good teachers, not just to teach us, but to inspire us. And say that basically somebody told me a good teacher is a performer on a stage. If the good teacher comes in front of us, we get inspired. And what we are trying to do, so I said, in the course of 40, 45 lectures, can we have some of the best teachers in the country deliver 15 lectures live in class? Hmm? Remaining 30 lectures can be done locally. Hmm? Can something like this be done? And we are planning to do this fairly soon. We are creating interactive e-books now, taking off from where Enviter video was done, where there is text, video, PPT, of every section there is a tremendous interactivity, quizzes, and you do that, every stroke of yours is captured, and things like that. We are talking about group learning, because students learn in group. They have been telling us that we learn in group, and we want a group learning interactive too. We are talking about virtual labs, a lot of work has gone on, saying that labs are not there in all colleges, can there be virtual labs? And Group learning is not in classes. No, we are talking about a group of 10 students learning together with the devices. So, that's, so here things have been defined by students when they want to basically, 10 of us want to give them the tutorial, it could be. So that's what they once the last seven thing that we are doing, e-quiz and e-evaluation, we are talking about IIT has taken initiative along with uh, NASCOM, saying three fundamental courses, programming languages, design and analysis algorithm, data structures will create new, and uh, NASCOM is going to do the certification, going to do mentoring and things like that. Then we are talking about a complete ERP for schools, colleges, um, uh, such that all the processes inside get uh, computerized, and we are trying to drive things like that. So this is another thing that we are trying to do, uh, computerization of college accounts and registration required for this. So what I'm pointing out, none of these programs are easy, but there is by and large blessing in the government. Um, and I'm sure that many of you can help here and there, in, or many of our alumni can help. It is not going to be trivial. 
program is one thing. Committees can come and define these programs. Implementing them is not easy. But I think it is doable in the next five to 10 years. In 10 years time, it is possible to start in using ICT to start improving quality to a reasonable extent. And that will help all of us. And I'm looking at Alumni to be partnership. Let me come to my second. It's more than a project. It's kind of something, the multiple projects we are doing all over the country. Uh, but I am driving it to some extent. Bhaskar is helping me. Anandan is helping me. Some of them are helping Let me talk about something else that we, two of us, Bhaskar and I, have been on. Um, and today I dare to say that we are dreaming that we want to see 50% of India's energy come from solar for the whole time. Now, we, we, neither of us are faculty in power. That should be very, we are communications people, both Bhaskar and I. But, and we really do not understand power distribution. We are studying like you people in undergraduate. But over the last one and a half years, we have picked up quite a bit, working with younger faculty members. You know, and to try to do a, something we can break. Hmm? And let me take five slides similarly to try to tell you what and why I believe that something like this is possible. Hmm? Uh, first of all, uh, all of us know about shortage of power. But I think this shortage of power is best illustrated if I go to today the power exchanges. Just like there are uh, uh, stock uh, exchanges, there are no power exchanges. Power producers come to the exchanges, electricity boards come to the exchanges, and every hour power is sold at the whatever price the people pay. Now, the interesting thing, if I look at the prices on any particular day, starts from all the way from 2 rupees per unit to 5 rupees per unit, and some of the days goes up to 12 rupees per unit. 12 rupees per unit. Now, this is the cost of power at the source. By the time you carry and distribute losses, etc., whatever you take into account, <coughs> other things, there is going to be switching, all kinds of reform, you have to add about 50 to 70 percent. So essentially, the 2 rupees will become 3 to 350, and 12 rupees will become 20 rupees per unit. So I think the very, very big issue is, you can just imagine, the average prices are now coming, except in states like Gujarat and uh, in uh, Himachal Pradesh, in Uttaranchal, wherever there is a Dam, the price is the cost is low. Wherever there is no dam, hmm, the price that uh, uh, are more like eight rupees, nine rupees, eight rupees average pricing for, to the final delivery pricing. At that price, around eight rupees, seven fifty, eight rupees, the electricity board should break even. And all electricity boards, except in these three states, are in red. If you look at the power situation, we have plenty of coal in India. Problem is coal is uh, polluting. We have poor quality coal, which is even more polluting. So, and then of course, taking it out of the mines and doing it, it's a tough job. That's the only place where we can go. Natural gas, we don't have. We don't, we have some hydroelectric, but way the environmental movements are, I don't think we can expand that. Nuclear is too small. So for us, the option is coal or something else. So that's where something else comes in. What does it cost us? Many of you are from industry. Uh, the grid power costs us anywhere from 5 rupees to 9 rupees. You can say 4 rupees to 9 rupees, uh, mm, depending on where you are and things like that. A diesel generator today, by the time you run it, you take the total cost. You take the non subsidized cost. Now the uh, subsidy is being going on. It is coming between 22 to 24 rupees per unit. Now you're taking the on total cost, cost from the engine diesel generator. Everything you have to take it at the market rates of interest. I'm not taking, uh, if you have bought it in dollar and not paid interest, it's a different thing. I'm just not saying, let's take the actual cost. Assuming that you take 30, 40 percent interest for short term, you take 10 percent for very long term, what does it really cost? And taking into account the maintenance cost, 26, 24 rupees per unit it costs. But if you run the diesel generator at 85 percent, 80 percent, 85 percent um, kind of uh, load, you run it. 40% lower, the cost goes up to 35 rupees. And many of us run this. We often, then comes what is the option? Then we use electrical backup. <coughs> and we think all of us use electrical backup. The cost of electrical battery backup, if you again calculate the total cost, it comes from between uh, 12 to 15 rupees per unit. Unbelievable rates. 12 to 
these solutions. So it will take the cost. Now this is the cost of storage alone. This is not the cost of charging. Charging is on top of it. So the 12 plus 5, 17 rupees is the cost. What about solar photovoltaic? Today, if you put it on a rooftop, the solar photovoltaic, directly use this, assuming nothing required for the rooftop, can come to 5 rupees to 5 rupees. Maybe 6 rupees, depending on what interest rate that you take. I think it is possible. And you make convert it to AC, another rupee will go there. So still 657. So if you have space, solar is by far superior to an electrical battery diesel generator and on par with grid for commercial and even close to homes. And the price is only going to go down from here because today we are working with 13% efficiency. It is going to become 20% efficiency in about two and a half, three years' time. And that's a and there's no subsidy. This is zero subsidy. I'm talking about no subsidy. And uh, there is no subsidy. Now, the question is, I've said the DC can be used. So the first question is, why am I saying DC can be used? All of those things is, what does it really do? And I want to raise a fundamental issue. These are the things that you need to do if you want to get 50% of your power from solar. First important thing is, if you look at DC um, versus AC, our LEDs today, most people are starting to shift towards LEDs. And as you shift to LED, the LED is DC. You actually convert your AC into DC. If you are using LCD, sorry, um, if you use CFL, it is neutral. It's a, it takes high frequencies, neutral to AC and DC. You only anyway have to do a conversion. It doesn't cost you more. It, in fact, is cheaper to do it using DC. You take a fan. Most of us probably don't know, and I did not know until three years back, all my life I've been a electrical engineer, that a DC fan is twice is half the amount of energy for the same uh, wind speed, wind speed that, same wind that it is, half the amount of energy. So as soon as I use, start using DC motors, my energy consumption goes down by a And to some extent, the same thing is valid for refrigerator, um, uh, for air conditioner, may not be a factor of two, maybe 60%, 65%, so there are other units. Uh, so there, and there's a huge reason to put shift towards this. Will the cost be more? Of course, in small volume, the cost will be more. But some of the top five companies have told us they have designed it for us, and they say a fan in high volume, something like a million, which is not really high volume, uh, will get the same product cost as this. So that's the next important thing. All electronics uses this. We do a AC to DC conversion. So in fact, losing. And if you can use DC, we can possibly, and even televisions are shifting to our DC. LCD LEDs are not uh, So the question that we started asking is, is it time to switch to DC, at least within the premises? Why do we have to say that we have to almost do this? And why do we have to wait for Germany to do it? Then we Why can't we take a lead? And we are starting to know that it labs. But in fact, my research part, I'm going to start putting some of the DC equipment and start looking in that direction. Now, we'll see the importance of this in the next couple of slides. If, if this 50% green has to be done, it is, and 50% of what today's energy, 50% of energy requirement or power requirement in 2030, electrical power I'm talking about. I'm not talking about energy, by the way, I'm talking about electrical power. Um, then I need to impact all four centers. Offices of commercial building, industry, and agriculture. Hmm? Otherwise, 50% will not happen. So let me talk about what we are trying to do. Or at least so. So let's start with commercial building. And this is what we are starting to do at IIT. IIT is our commercial buildings. And we are moving to research farm. Hmm? We are trying to put solar for the whole time. And, and uh, ideally in the daytime. And most of the use in the office buildings are in it goes somewhat in the evening, but evening overload reduces. Uh, some offices work late. Uh, direct usage in office shopping malls can reduce daytime peak load. Now, daytime peak load, remember that peak that I saw, showed you where the cost becomes very high, and that's a time, part of it is the daytime, part is in the evening. So, daytime peak can be completely shaped off. Now, if you do that, the also there is a natural load demand match. The important thing is that it is the hottest, hmm? and therefore you require more air conditioning. 
Most of the load, by the way, is air conditioning. You, the solar power is the maximum. And therefore, there's a natural load. So can we actually use it to the effectively? And that's the direction that we are working on. Can we design available power air conditioner? We are starting to design available power air conditioner rather than the current air, kind of air conditioners. And of course, gradually shift to DC use will increase efficiency by a factor of almost two. If not more. Don't mean you can't shift it immediately, but can you start shifting? We'll be doing enough of that and start shifting. The key problem will be what about evening peak loads. Now, commercial buildings have less of an evening peak load. Of course, shopping malls, etc., has. Um, and that's where we are sort of pushing policy and then introduce time to evening And charge evening rates. So, your evening rates are high, great prices, because that's what you're paying. You're paying 12 rupees in the evening one. You start charging more, at least people will start trying to see how they can use less thing and use more efficient energy efficient power and use uh, in the daytime charges using some storage. But this is where I want to point out that you can't just take conventional what has been done in the West and bring it and make it work. Now, just to give you an example, uh, today it is being done in the country. A lot of people are doing it. And what are they doing and what are the difference that they are making? Today, to put, uh, it's all subsidy driven. And therefore, what you do is when you put, buy some credits, you buy some DC DC converter, MVPT converters, you buy inverters and synchronize it to the Now, this is something that at 70 rupees, 72 rupees, there are enough people who come and do it in any In fact, there have been people who have been pushing this, huh? all coming from outside world, or people. I have no problem with it. things coming from outside, as long as it's been people. Um, the problem is, as soon as a power cut takes place, this stops. Why? In a daytime, I have some power cut is taking place. Why should it stop? I can figure this out. It just shuts it down. Now, you shut it down simply because a grid is an infinite source of electric power. Huh? And therefore, whatever your load is, grid will supply. As long as grid is there, Huh? This will supply whatever it can supply, the rest grid will supply. If your grid becomes off, then this must supply all that you need. But suppose it cannot supply all that you need, then your load must shut down or reduce. If your load doesn't uh, shut down, if this tries to drive and this has requires no power, those things will go. So they do not know what to do, so they shut it down. Very simple. And that triggered us to start working on what is called local control. We are designing boxes like Ethernet hubs boxes, now sitting in almost every outside every room, which are actually monitoring the power in each room almost, or each section of the room, and doing controls. Simple controls, shut it down, but there are other controls you can do, like available power and conditioning. Reduce the brightness, shut off alternative uh, lights if you don't have enough power. Because if I don't have enough the power, then what else do I do? Then what we have done is that we have designed small battery racks. And we are doing charging of this as a controlled charging and controlled discharging. By using control that is non trivial to do control charging. And I thought it was a little bit trivial, but there is a huge exercise and we are designing that now. And the control charging and discharging in, makes me to a very, very interesting power management problem at a local building level, saying, I have to estimate what kind of grids are likely to go off, what is the cost of the grid power, what is the cost of the, what, the, what is the available solar power, how much should I charge the battery, because I know what the battery charging and discharging costs, how much should I take from the battery, how much should I take from the grid, should I turn the diesel generator, does it make sense, uh, where do I shut down the load, where do I reduce the load, and this becomes a very, very interesting problem and we have just started working on it, but even our initial gain shows that we can do huge, we can do far more than 50% that we have in the process. This is the first thing that we have worked on. Agricultural parts. We have found that we can put agricultural solar um, uh, this thing and then put a pumps. You need to do what's called variable frequency drives, those of you who remember a little bit of your engineering. Uh, because when the sun is very low, the amount of power available is very low. 
And when the sun peaks and the power is high, then again then the sun goes low. And you should start pumping water all through. And the way it should be that you should start pumping small amount of water, pick up, and then go down. And that kind of thing, variable frequency drives, it's possible to design this. This, we are actually designing it, we are doing it. The interesting thing is, all the pumping can be done. There are one core pumps in the country. All the pumps actually can be converted. And within a year, year and a half, they actually pay off, provided you do it right. Unfortunately, subsidy driven things are being done totally in a wrong direction, wrong way. They are oversizing it, they are not doing it properly, they are not putting proper DFT. It's total mess that is there. Uh, uh, but that we are trying to correct, of course, that's a very difficult job because you are not talking about specific state governments you know, and who just sort says nothing doing, we want to do this, and all that. That's where a lot of the other things that you are talking about uh, start coming. Coming. But we are working on it and we believe that that can significantly add to be the main agriculture electricity use and business. And it is possible. Now, the question is what happens if there is a rainy season and rains work? You mm -hmm. require rain and water to be rains. There is a natural load demand match. You have to leverage that. What about homes? We are doing a very interesting piece of work. And this, uh, a week back I would have talked about it, we have just filed a patent on it. Or we are filing a disclosure. We are not even filing a patent. Because we are filing a disclosure, I can actually talk about it. This is our something very interesting. That we are doing. This is supposed to be proposed by us when we are. By the way, our energy power secretary today is our own element. Hmm? Uh, and we should have catch him sometime. Uh, and in discussing with him and number of discussions, this main problem is political. You today you have to give at 3 rupees 50 paise. You increase the price, there is going to be riots. And uh, they are going to lose elections. If you don't increase it to 6 rupees, 7 rupees, electricity votes will become bankrupt. If electricity votes become bankrupt, you have again a problem that they are not going to try to buy power more power. <coughs> you will remain perpetual shortage. You will never solve this problem. And he says, if you want to solve the problem, don't talk about the solar, etc. Solve me this problem. And we said, okay, we will solve this problem. Mm -hmm. And we will come with a very, very interesting way. Very interesting method. The second point is, so what is, how do you incentivize home to If you are getting a few rupees, 50 pence of what what incentives are there? How do I really incentivize? So that's where we came with a new scheme. And this is just a proposal. But we are building the technology. We are saying, suppose government gives a fixed amount of power. Let's say 100 watts. Very good. We will talk about what 100 watts is. In DC form theory. How do you give it PC form? We have figured out all those things. Suppose you put 100 watts to it. Now, you will say you will subsidize it. Hmm? Not very large amount. So, total we have to work out, doesn't work. So, you, it doesn't work out too much. You can charge it 4 rupees per unit or whatever. 100 watts you will give. Huh? Then you say, if that time never have a power, you will be running to 10%. But that is something. Now you are getting something. Because 100 watt uninterrupted rather than power. Whatever be the shortage, well, shortage will affect something else, but will not. So we will supply 100 watt of DC, plus we will supply AC. AC will be at the market rate and will go off if there is a power shortage. DC will be at subsidized rate, will never go off. Never go off except if there is a great fault of the kind that happened. That's a different issue. What I'm saying will not be cut. Today, primary problem is cut. So, question is, then 100 watt DC looks quite quite appealing, except people say, what do you do with 100 watts? And this is the first thing that we are trying to do, is that we find that in a home, free lighting of this kind, this uh, typical lighting, two fans, two size fans, hmm? plus a small LCD TV, 20 inch, plus a little bit of charging of um, um, your mobile phone and stuff, all can come in 100, 100, 200, of course, your air conditioner cannot work. Refrigerator, we haven't figured out. It will, work. it will not work in that. That will take extra. Your mixer, grinder, you run on AC. So, when AC is available, and pay a little more for it. Now, the other interesting thing is that you don't have to stop there. Now, what we can do is that you can also say that you can supplement by a DC power. We are designing such thing that you put a 200 watt solar panel, a small battery, connect to the same thing, DC. 15,000 rupees, if you can spend that kind of money, 
then this 100 watts is not working out order. So now you have four or five lights, two, which are two, three fans, and tomorrow once you figure out the refrigerator, the refrigerator can also run. Your LCD TV can be 35 inch, 40 inch, it can also run. Today only 20 inch, 21 inch. Now, if we do this, we have actually fixed three things at the same time. First of all, we have fixed the situation where high efficiency devices are brought in. DC devices are brought in. Because it helps you. We have given incentives to get solar in because it helps you. We have made the electricity more viable because you are charging market rate for that. Yes. Unfortunately, we can't experiment with the IIT. The Bhaskar says that IIT power never fails. So you have to figure out how to make the IIT power fail to, uh, to, to make this happen. But this is what we have figured out. What are the pointing of very simple solutions? We haven't yet totally figured out. We have done a lot of work on industry. And uh, maybe before the next year, we will certainly come with an answer or something like before that. But uh, I think we have done a lot of work. But I think the three sectors, we have a fairly, fairly good understanding of how this dream of 50% power by solar is not an end dream. That we are committed to it. Uh, Sometime back, right in our apartment complex, had solar power. So it's just heating power. What's wrong with this system today? Because normally the people have this kind of huh? average apartment solar. He doesn't want to incur any one-time expense. He doesn't mind paying. You know, more capital expenditure only revenue. Yeah, but those are. He doesn't I, mind paying. I, so, no, so I was understanding that to overcome such a system, there is bank is being kept up. And the electricity boards themselves say they can be installed and recover at a normal rate of the country. Well, either electricity boards or there can be others who will come with schemes. I think already someone from, I don't know whether IIT Chennai or I read an article, he has already started uh, doing this. Uh, as you said, the user wants to pay only monthly, you know, like they are paying. So an industry, an entrepreneur has started in IIT graduate. They started the scheme by going out and doing it for each house or groups of houses in villages. He gets arranges the finance from the bank, does it, and then they pay only monthly. So a lot of once the technology is available, this can be done. Professor, sorry, I, have to I really uh, appreciate the point. Uh, I deliberately presented this. He wanted me to talk to this, but I saw lots of your questions that you are asking. Are we doing socially relevant things? Are we doing big things? Are we really trying to? To uh, break a few heads and uh, try to get there, I, I don't care if you fail. I'm not bothered. If we achieve 30 percent, that's great. But we'll achieve 50 percent. Uh, I think that's a direction we need to think and need to work. A lot of technology going forward, but it's not just technology, technology policy. Uh, some amount of uh, I would love if, since many of you are from different sectors, if you kind of want us to do a more detailed presentations on any of these things, participate in manner, find industry, your own companies or other companies which may come interested in something like this. They're able to work with you because things don't happen, don't happen just because of, uh, just by IIT. We of course are fortunately good rappers with the government. Um, yes, we are able to go through. I'll make a suggestion. It's an excellent uh, project. How do we uh, reach the market at the earliest? No? Can we do a pilot project? Yeah, we are already starting to do uh, We are we are installing one megawatt uh, in the in the campus. Yeah. We'll install 350 kilowatts in so the campus. Can, can you uh, email some of us this, this presentation is of this uh, pilot this project? Is, uh, I don't know. Uh, what I'm suggesting is uh, just give me one minute. What I'm suggesting is that if you can give a small proposal, you're running one pilot project. Fine. Can we have a proposal about what will cost? Uh, for a volunteer to come and okay, I would like you to do this pilot project in my company. Uh, a small project, then if you can give us uh, a note on this, we can find some people and uh, we could do pilot projects in a number of places. So one to one I can discuss with whether we want to do pilot project or uh, um, whether we want any other support. But I think the bigger support that I need first, I'm not come here to ask for money, I'm not come here to ask for I think industrial support also we, we know to some extent. I think what we really need is advocacy. 
go through this, understand, be our souls, make us learn the best thing and act this. And then, okay, if any industry wants to get involved, we will be very happy to do one-to-one -one something, but I don't want to say, this presentation can be shared, true, and my email is also there. Uh, you write to either me or Bhaskar. We write to me to the Bhaskar and Bhaskar. Yeah, yeah, Tamil Nadu is the right place because the policy is they are going to force it to have at least 6% or 10% of solar. So this actually is that uh, modular uh, Yeah, In fact, the whole agriculture policy, the thing we have done for Tamil Nadu, except when we did everything last minute, everything was being done, everything was changed. And with the secretary, we know very well, we were very upset. He says, sir, what can I do? Who was your order? What do you want me to do? So, I mean, we don't want to get involved. But we will drive this uh, wherever possible. We, we, we are not going to leave it. I'm not, uh, I, I mean, we are not going to depend on it. We will drive it. Like the, Just like we drove 100 million telephones when it looked impossible. I'm talking about we are doing dreaming impossible and we are deliberately dreaming impossible because we are not afraid of it. But I think this is what I want to do. Now, there are many, many people we, we can actually. In fact, the IT companies in Chennai are much larger and each one of them have to do, they can have a farm, solar farm. We'll serve me. We'll serve me. That's a commercial building thing is the one of the simplest thing we'll actually do. And every day I'm finding young people, young teams coming up with some, one more bright idea which adds to this, which makes things even more interesting. If there are all my numbers, if somebody has met me in Hyderabad and showed me something, I have called, given it to my civil engineering department to check it out. If that is valid, uh, I save another 15 percent. I don't know if that's the guy is talking, but he says he has actually implemented. It. So things are fast changing. So we are trying to do what I I'm just giving you two examples. So we are not just trying to do small things. We are trying to make a difference. That's all. I'm sorry. I'm going. Are we here already? Yeah. Hmm? yeah. So, so the lunch. Uh, lunch I can't join because somebody is coming. But I'll try to reserve part. Let me see. 334 Senate Hall. Where is Senate Hall? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to see if I can come. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Most of you know me. I'm exactly with you. I think the presentation can be ensured. Yeah, it's going to circulate.